This betrayal by the U.S. Supreme Court is where we begin this hour with Senator Richard Blumenthal. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you, Nicole. Good to be with you. I believe you predicted that this would be the response from Chief Justice Roberts, but I'd still love to hear about what the next best scenario is for Congress to truly do, do the work of the American people who have, let, let me put this up, it is an extraordinary, it's, it's not a decline in public support, it is a plunge. In the year 2000, 75 percent of Americans, according to Gallup, had a great deal or fair amount of trust in the Supreme Court. By 2010, it's down to 66, 2020, it's down to 67, in 2022, 47 percent. I don't think there's a single institution in American civil life, certainly not the the one you serve in or the one in which I work that has plunged that quickly, that fast? That is a very, very important point, Nicole, because the Supreme Court depends for its authority and power on the trust and credibility of the American people. The Supreme Court has no armies or police force. It's supposed to be the least dangerous branch, as it has been characterized, because it has no physical force. And the only reason people follow the Supreme Court is a belief in its integrity. Now, I will grant the Supreme Court must be independent. But being independent doesn't mean that the highest court in the land is above the law. And that is why now a proper investigation is necessary. The Chief Justice, in effect, has very regrettably, even reprehensibly, dodged responsibility here. It will be a stain on his personal legacy. But institutionally, there has to be an investigation by the Judicial Conference, which he heads, or the Justice Department, probably both. But in the ongoing absence of action, Congress must act to uncover all the facts. And what's most regrettable here is that Justice Thomas has created the appearance that the Supreme Court is for hire and open to the highest bidder, in his case, Harlan Crow, who had leadership roles in organizations with cases before the Supreme Court. That kind of appearance of impropriety cannot be allowed to stand and stain the court. Will the committee consider inviting Justice Sotomayor, who rather famously spoke about the stench? on the court because of conservative legislative bodies legislating because of who had been appointed to it? I mean, would you consider um, inviting um, the liberal justices who may be more interested in being part of this conversation about ethics? We should consider inviting other justices, but also subpoenaing other witnesses as well as documents. As a last resort, if there's no action by other branches of government with appropriate responsibility, either the judges themselves or the Justice Department, the Judiciary Committee should consider subpoenas for the justices who may be concerned. But, you know, the House Judiciary Committee is also a place where responsibility lies because I think there's a need to consider impeachment here. I'm very mm -hmm. clear-eyed. I have no illusions about the House Judiciary Committee chaired by Republicans mm -hmm. beginning an impeachment proceeding against Justice Thomas. But I think Congress as a whole has a responsibility here. Are you aware of any conversations that have gone on between the Senate Judiciary and the House Judiciary over just the, the, the idea of, of, of any oversight? Or is that not happening because of the Republican leadership in the House? I am not aware of any such conversations between yeah. our committee on the Senate side and the House. But I will say in, in answer to your question that the Chief Justice has been a little bit disingenuous here. Mm -hmm. Cases of the Chief Justice appearing before the Congress are rare, but there have been a lot of cases of other justices appearing before the Judiciary Committee or other bodies of Congress. And if he won't appear, others should. Are you aware of any, I mean, I imagine a, a subpoena, a vote on a subpoena is, is challenging without Senator Fines. I mean, can you take me through where the conversations are among your colleagues about a subpoena for the Chief Justice or other justices? I think this kind of consideration is 
just beginning because mm -hmm. we've just received this reply. We're all hoping against hope that the Chief Justice would voluntarily appear. And I speak for myself personally in saying we ought to consider subpoenas. I think that we ought to take every possible action consistent with the independence of the judiciary, because we've asked them to do it themselves, to adopt a code of ethics on their own. So far, they have refused. And I think there ought to be an inspector general, along with a code mm -hmm. of ethics, for the judiciary. But right now, we're beginning consideration of what our next step should be. Uh, part of the problem seems to be that, that Congress seems more concerned about the collapse in their integrity than they do. I want to show you something that your colleague, um, Senator Cory Booker, said this morning. I read uh, his words closely uh, of the reason why he said he talked about it being a very rare thing for a, a, a chief justice to come before uh, the, a judiciary committee. And mm -hmm. I agree. It's a very rare thing when the United States of America, when our citizens, we are a body politic, see judges acting in ways that are so extreme and so out of line with what we would think would be basic ideas of ethics. We have a court now in crisis. And this is, again, not a partisan issue. We cannot allow our court to further lose its legitimacy. And we have an obligation to address these issues. And it should be done in an open forum I mean, can you think of any precedent for an institution like the Supreme Court that acknowledges its own crisis? I mean, they all give speeches before, in some instances, special interest groups and other conservative gatherings um, on the right, where they bemoan the loss of integrity and trust in the U.S. Supreme Court, but they don't seem willing to come to the table to present itself as above reproach by having an ethics code that even just other, other federal judges have. What, what, do, what do you do about that? A absolutely right, and I agree with my colleague, Senator Booker. And you made the point earlier when you led into this segment. What we face here is, to use your word, extraordinary. Absolutely almost unique in our history, Mm -hmm. Maybe with the exception more recently of Abe Fortas, who resigned. But I think this crisis really demands that the Chief Justice own it and step forward and help preserve the court's credibility as an institution. And what we do now, I think, is to uncover all of the facts, which is why a proper investigation mm -hmm. ultimately, I think, will be our job to consider. We will need to take whatever action, and many of us are former prosecutors who know how to do investigation, whatever action is necessary to preserve and restore the credibility of the court. It is a crisis. It is the equivalent of judicial malpractice for Chief Justice Roberts to refuse to come before our committee and answer questions. It is another example of the Supreme Court saying, in effect, we don't have to answer to anyone. That's not the Constitution of the United States. If you can't get the justices, will you subpoena Mr. Crow and others who have been the topic of um, investigative journalism about their ties to the justices? My own view is, yes, we should subpoena Mr. Crow, anyone else with knowledge, and whatever institutions, including his business, for example, or maybe the Judicial Conference itself, which mm -hmm. may have records that illuminate what happened here. And the point you make is also very important. So far, what we know has come from investigative reporting. The press has given us the information that we have about these years of hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts and travel and now financial disclosures about Justice Thomas, and mm -hmm. I put him in a class of his own, mm -hmm. different from Neil Gorsuch right now, who failed to report that Brian Duffy, the head of a major law firm with potential cases before the court, bought his property. He didn't disclose the identity of the purchaser. Maybe it was a mistake. What Justice Thomas did in declining to disclose year after year is potentially criminal. And that's why the Department of Justice should investigate their criminal penalties applicable to what Justice Thomas did. 
It also seems, I, mean, I said this yesterday, that the, the forms seem to be like sushi menus. Like you check the box you want, you leave blank the one you want. At, at, at the end of the day, I mean, do, do, you, do you also bring in whatever, uh, you know, weak and unenforceable ethics officers are at the court and, and ask them what mechanisms there are to, to check that the form, I mean, you fill out a background form, you're going to work in the White House and you do it under penalty of imprisonment. Clearly, these dudes are not filling out these forms with any fear of anything at all. You know, there's a thing about enforcement that it creates deterrence. Prosecution focuses attention. And I think the judiciary has been lacking effective enforcement. That's why I have come to believe the judicial branch needs an inspector general. As you well know, every agency, every major department of the federal government has an inspector general, and they uncover waste, fraud, wrongdoing that can be prosecuted if it's criminal, and at the very least, the subject of civil action. Why should the judiciary be above the law? It's supposed to be most respectful of the law, and you make an absolutely key point that enforcement has to be part of any code of ethics. That's why I am developing legislation that would provide for an inspector general. Mm -hmm. I support other measures that provide for codes of ethics. There are a number that have been proposed, but I think something more in the way of effective enforcement is necessary.